Well, many years ago, a young baby was stricken with a life-threatening illness. Friends and family prayed for him, and he was healed. Even doctors said there was no explanation except the grace of God snatched him back from the brink of death. That child's name was Jack Hayford, and it wasn't the last time he saw firsthand the miracle-working power of God. Jack Hayford has been in ministry for more than 50 years. He's best known for founding the Church on the Way in Van Nuys, California, where he served as senior pastor for more than three decades. In 1997, Jack founded the King's University, formerly the King's College and Seminary in Los Angeles, where he still serves as chancellor. As an author, Jack has written over 40 books. Penetrating the Darkness is his first book on spiritual warfare. Jack Hayford is here with us now, and it is always a pleasure to have you visit with and us. Always a pleasure to be here, Terry. You've written, along with your daughter, Rebecca, who's also a prolific writer, it she runs is. in your family, Penetrating the Darkness, a book about uh, really spiritual warfare. At this point in time in history, Jack, why is this so important? Well, I think the nature of the uh, whole atmosphere of our society is not just affected by human failure, but the place that is given through human blindness and uh, the sheer and raw cruelty and brutality of the adversary, knowing that he's uh, coming down to, you know, the showdown finally is coming, and I think the adversary is not at all ignorant of this, and the concentration of uh, increase of battle. If you consider mm -hmm. that the Apostle Paul said that we're, that in first century he says we're wrestling with principalities yes. and powers, that wrestling match only yeah. increases in intensity. And uh, I think that there's a great deal, Terry, that people fail to discern. It's, it's not a matter of superstitiously saying everything that happens is the devil. Mm -hmm. But there's a good deal more than often people identify that is, uh, is that. And, uh, and, and in fact, even things sometimes God gets blamed for. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, you say the adversary is very aware of it, but we often are not. You say that, that, that Christians sometimes pray in the same way we would rub a rabbit's foot for good <laughs> luck. What do you mean by that? Well, I, I, just, I just mean that uh, there's a good deal of prayer that is superstition. But I, I don't think it's very often Christians uh, I think there are many people who do know the Lord and are very immature in their prayer life uh, for want of teaching and want of uh, churches where there's a vibrant prayer ministry. Mm -hmm. And uh, so there's some of that. But I think uh, sloganeering God, uh, he, he has a great heart and he knows when our hearts really truly do have need. Yeah. But when we bandy around words that uh, we suppose that this will cure a problem by knowing, for example, as deeply as I believe in the importance of making a confession of faith in the Word of God when you receive a promise, I think sometimes people even treat the concept of faith. Well, I've said the magical verses mm -hmm. that go with this problem. Surely God will and, jump uh, to <laughs> Yes, and, it's, it's, and those things I would parallel to rabbit's foot rubbing. Although quoting a scripture may be a rung up on rabbit's feet. <laughs> <laughs> God did speak to your heart about uh, daily devotional prayer in your life, the discipline of that. Mm -hmm. What did you feel the Lord was saying to you? Well, what happened, uh, I had, over the early years at the Church on the Way, as the Lord was really, there was a breakthrough in understanding and vitality of the spirit of worship in the church, and continues to this day for that matter, uh, which is gratifying to observe in that Ann and I are attenders now at the church. <laughs> when we're home, I'm out speaking quite a bit, but uh, it's a delight to see the health of the church on the way today. Uh, worship life and the intercessory ministry of the church was very uh, strong. And in that time, these two things had begun to worship and intercession. And the Lord just said, your personal devotional habit, you've forgotten that discipline. Yeah. And it wasn't as though I didn't pray daily. It's that there were patterns of prayer that I, I, I was attentive, for example, to pray I, I didn't stop praying for our children every day, but there are other things that uh, I've, I felt I need to give attention to these daily, not as a superstitious mandate of God, but to keep my heart tuned before God about that part of our life. Yeah. I think oftentimes prayer, presenting ourselves to the Lord on issues that we list, prayer lists, 
is not just a recitation as though we were making a, re a, 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 a required speech, mm -hmm. but uh, something that keeps our hearts truly tuned to fresh movement of the Holy Spirit in your life when you pray for that. I think the language of the Spirit is a tremendous gift mm -hmm. uh, that the Holy Spirit gives to assist our prayer life, to, as the Bible says in Romans 8, that we uh, don't always know how precisely we may need yeah. to pray and uh, that He'll help us mm -hmm. hit the target. And, uh, and that's important of invoking the presence yeah. and power of God, not that He couldn't do it anyway, but he, the Lord wants our partnership. Yeah. He and what he's doing in us. this world. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he really does. He can get along without us, but he likes, he likes us and wants to grow <laughs> us up. I, God is uh, somehow fixated with this idea that he wants his kids to grow up. Yes. <laughs> you know, so, and our prayer life is a great part of that. Yeah. And the, the discipline of daily devotional habit is incorporated in this book, Penetrating the Darkness, mm -hmm. as a foundational basic to our life. I mainly in that book, however, wanted to address the nature of the spiritual warfare and then not to be intimid intimidated yes. by it and to recognize that the conquest that overcomes already has been established through the cross, yeah. but it is to be applied the same way that you apply the provision of the cross for your salvation when you receive Christ. Appropriating what is provided is an action and in prayer we apply the triumph of Calvary to circumstances where there are, in fact, ferocious works of darkness, especially. Yeah. And understanding the ground that we stand on because of what Christ did. We can't hardly understand the battle or how to, to function mm -hmm. in it if we don't know that. These are basics. It, they, they really are. And when you say to understand the place that we have, it's so important to taking a stance where you have peace and confidence that the power of prayer is generated by the Spirit and established through the cross and the promise of God. Yeah. And I think understanding that moves it from feeling that there's some mystery mm, of something great. we do. Our role is to pray. Mm -hmm. You have not because you ask not, yeah. but when you ask because of Calvary and the promises of the Word, then you've got grounds to stand on. But the cross is pivotal yeah. in the spiritual yeah. warfare. Penetrating the Darkness is the name of the book. If you want to know how to wage spiritual warfare, get Jack's book. It'll also change your prayer life. It's available nationwide where books are sold. Thank you for being here. Thank Always you, great to have you.